Okay, so this is the introduction to the eSecurity module. So the module numbers are CSN11117 and CSN11102. So the main uh, focus of the module is around cryptography and host-based security, and we hope to be providing some fundamental knowledge around the key principles in involved. So it splits into 10 core units uh, covering cryptography fundamentals, symmetric key encryption, also known as secret key, hashing and MAC, asymmetric encryption, also known as public key encryption, key exchange, trust and digital certificates, tunneling, cryptocurrencies and blockchain, future cryptography, and then some host security. So here's a quick disclaimer. What we really want to be able to do is to get Bob and Alice to communicate in a secret and private way and to have some integrity built into their communications. Unfortunately, Eve can come along and can listen to their communications. Eve could also change some of the communication between Bob and Alice and also Eve could pretend to be Bob and communicate with Alice. On the internet, we bring in the concept of Trent, and Trent is the trusted entity. So a lot of the examples that will be given will be given in this contact, context where we have trusted users, Bob and Alice, we have an untrusted adversary, Eve, and we have a trusted entity who's trusted by both Bob and Alice, and that's Trent. And I must say that encryption works great until it doesn't. Encryption works great as long as no one makes a mistake. And encryption works great as long as, as long, unless something goes wrong. And encryption works great as long as everything else works right. Okay, so the methods that we'll uh, outline are, are pretty robust in themselves, but obviously um, other things can go wrong in their setup. So the module itself will be delivered, or the, the medium for delivery uh, is, is through several things. Uh, YouTube for the, uh, the lectures and also for the labs. We set up a Slack space for communication. So here you can ask questions directly of your tutors, uh, or you could share some useful information. For the coursework, will be using Overleaf uh, to be able to create the document which is actually submitted. And I'll outline this in more detail later. I have a Twitter feed here for any interesting information. But the core of, m of a good deal of the material and the demonstration is on our security site.com. And the code and documents and so on are on a Git repository and this should be updated on a fairly regular basis. So you'll see in the labs and demonstrations, the lectures and the demonstrations on YouTube, uh, Overleaf for the courseworks, and then we have selected uh, Ubuntu as our uh, core operating system. So you should find that all of the code that's been, uh, that will be given should have all of the components integrated into the Ubuntu instance. And for this, we're going to use three standard core things that provide a way of us to be able to demonstrate the key methods, OpenSSL, Python, and Node.js. So each of these provide us a way to be able to visualize, to be able to create and analyze our cryptography. So the site itself is, is here. And in, with an encryption, you'll find uh, some demos. But the key site for 
uh, the module is at this address here. It's at this address that you'll find links to the content, the timetable, and other, uh, other useful links. This should lead from Moodle to, or you can go directly uh, from here. There is also a GitHub that's been set up, and the GitHub should have the lab content and also the source code required uh, along with the commands for each of the labs. So if you want, you can download the, all this code and all the labs onto your own machine, or you can use our virtual machines. So this is the virtual machine here. You'll be using a Ubuntu image. And I'll just power up. <coughs> so once it's powered up, make sure you, you, you launch the remote console and not the web console. To be able to copy and paste, we need to be able to use the remote, the VMware remote console. So we'll just fire that up and we'll get logged in. So the Ubuntu image should have all of the software already installed onto it. But you can create your own Ubuntu instance and install the components if that's what you want to do. And we'll try and build a Ubuntu instance such as this one. And then you can download that from the cloud. Okay, so it's in here, we can actually do uh, much of our code. Uh, if you're in Python, P is equal to 101, G is equal to 2, and uh, our cipher is equal to G to the power of P, and so on. And the great thing with uh, Python is that it allows you to be able to deal with very large numbers, uh, which is an important uh, thing for for us to, to to look at. Okay, so here you should be able to do your uh, main uh, Python code. We've also installed Node on there. and open SSL. And, uh, and all of the other tools that you actually need. Okay, so it should be your virtual machine and you should be able to set it up uh, as, you, as you want. Uh, there'll be demonstrations for the labs uh, that you can watch on YouTube. And if you have any questions about the lab, then you just uh, ask us. But what you should find is that uh, from the code, if we take an example here, say for this one, you should be able to just copy and paste your examples directly into your Python code. The paste should work, copy and paste should work, and there it's working there. Okay, otherwise, you might want to replicate the Git repository onto your virtual machine and then update it from there. Okay, so make sure you make, you, you use the, the Git repository. It'll be updated with new tips and solutions and, and so on. Okay, so that's the, that's the module content. And each week <coughs> on a Friday, uh, the units will be uh, released. So on the first unit, uh, the first Friday, uh, this is the, the key things that you should know after the end of this unit. There's some presentations, the lab, a few sample exam questions. So we, we won't need these really until the exam time, but it's good to get uh, yourself used to answering these types of questions because this is the type of question that might get asked in the in the exam and then there's a few little fun tests with some solutions in, in here
Okay, so each week, this is what you would have to do and try to keep up with uh, the work as, as, you, as you go along and ask any questions that, that you have. The test itself uh, will be mainly uh, an small, short, short answers and, and some longer answers. Uh, there tends not to be too many of the, the practical elements within the test as that will be covered by the coursework. Okay, so for the timetable that we have, <coughs> as I said, each Friday, uh, new content will be added. And for week one, starting the 18th of January, we'll have our ciphers and fundamentals. Just a few things that we need to cover before we go on to some of the other units. So you might get these things straight away, or it might take you a while. Uh, to for it sinking, but we've got to oh, about week nine before the first test, so you'll find that some of the concepts might go in, not go in straight away, but as we develop through the module, uh, they will become more obvious. It's key to ask questions. Each week there will be a, a WebEx session where you can uh, ask questions. Week two, symmetric key, hashing, and Mac asymmetric and so on until we get to week nine uh, when it's the test we then go on through there and then we have the second test here and the third the third assessment is the coursework hand in uh, here okay so trying to give you good feedback here so that you know where you stand to be able to to get the grade that, that you are you are hoping Okay, so how does it all fit together? So why are we covering so many different concepts? Well, the reason is, is that we need to provide a foundation that really tries to explain <coughs> this complex infrastructure that, that we have within inside our, our, with inside cryptography. Increasingly, it's used to be able to protect uh, our, our data. <coughs> Public key comes in when we need to sign for things, when Bob needs to sign with his identity and also to prove his identity. So in this in this area here, we have public key methods such as RSA and increasingly we use elliptic curve methods. Then we use symmetric key encryption to be able to secure our data. So that's a typical method of AES, a block cipher or ChaCha20 is used increasingly, and that's what's called a stream cipher. So we'll try to understand the different methods that we've got, but symmetric key encryption is highly optimized, much, much faster than public key. And this is the, the method that's typically used to encrypt data over the network or to be stored onto disk. We also need to know what the encoding format is, what must we convert to be able to send our data, our keys, over the network. So that's looking at different codons such as B64, hex, byte streams, and so on. And then we need to find out what our key is that we're going to be using for the tunnel because what happens if Eve finds out the key, each time we need to be able to negotiate a new key possibly. So that involves key exchange. In a key exchange, we generate a symmetric key typically using a method such as Diffie-Hellman or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. And whenever you connect to a secure site on the internet, such as Amazon, there is this communication back and forward between Bob and Alice, and they agree on a key that they use. Hopefully, if that one key is hacked, then none of the other keys that Bob and Alice are using will be hacked. And then we need to make sure that the messages that we're sending are correct, and we're still communicating with the entities we thought we were. And for that, we need a fingerprint using hashing or message, ath ath message access codes, our max. With this, we have SHA-1, SHA-256, HMAC, and so on. And then we need some trust on the internet. How do we trust what's, how do we trust Bob's identity? <clears throat> So often we use the concept of trust 
with Trent. Trent will prove Bob's identity. Typically, with what's called the public key infrastructure, or PKI, and digital certificates. In this way, Bob and Alice can trust Trent and to be able to trust each other. Then we have a whole lot of other things, such as privacy. Why should we be sending passwords over the network? Why can't we just prove to someone that we know our password and still know it? That's zero knowledge proofs. And then there's homomorphic encryption that allows us to be able to process on values without actually knowing what those values are. And digital signing is increasingly important that we can have one or many people signing data. Then we have the rights of access, the rights to data, policies, governance and auditing. So altogether we need to build up an understanding of how all this jigsaw puzzle fits together and makes our system secure. So in our first, uh, the first module, we'll be looking at some basic fundamentals, looking at traditional older ciphers and trying to crack them. So there won't be anything in the, uh, in the tests that will look at these older ciphers, but it's quite good to get ourselves into gear and to try out a few of the different ciphers such as CESA codes. Then we'll look at the basic concepts of key-based encryption, encoding methods, a bit around frequency analysis, and then the greatest common denominator is something that we'll come across later in the module. So we need to understand the basic concepts behind that. And random numbers are very important for us. Any weaknesses in this can cause serious problems. When we look at public key encryption and signing, we'll find that prime numbers are used often. So we'll have a quick look to see what a prime number looks like and how we can use them. Then we'll be using big numbers, massive numbers, typically 1024 bits and more extremely large numbers. We'll look at big integers. And finally, we'll have a look at uh, some of the basic operators that we have. There are simple, mod, <coughs> the remainder of a division, XOR, an add-in type function, and shift. In the second unit, we'll be looking at symmetric key or secret key, looking at some of the basics, and especially around whether something is a block cipher, AES, or a stream cipher, such as ChaCha20. Then we'll look at the basic techniques, all the different methods, such as DES, 3DES, RC2, RC4, and so on. And then we'll see the importance of salting as part of the symmetric key to make sure that when we cipher, even with the same data, we'll always come up with a different cipher stream. And then we'll look in more detail at AES, which is the gold standard for symmetric key encryption and a little bit around DES. So we'll look inside AES and see how it actually works. Then we'll look at another important one, which is ChaCha20 in Poly1305. And finally, an important concept is key entropy. How strong is our keys? Even though we say we're using 128-bit keys, is the way that we're generating them making our key space less? So we need to understand what the concept is around key entropy, especially if we're using passwords to generate our keys. In the third unit, we'll look more at creating this digital fingerprint around hashing and Mac. So we'll look at the basic methods that we use uh, around hashing, especially in an MD5, SHA1, SHA3, SHA256, LM hash, bcrypt, and PBK DFS2. These are the slow methods, these are the fast methods. Why do we use fast methods and why do we use slow methods? We'll find out. And typically that's around the cracking potential of it. The fast methods are often easier to crack than the slow methods. So we'll look at the tools such as uh, John the Ripper and Hashcat to be able to uh, understand the strength of these hashes. Then we'll look at what hash passwords look like and all the different ways that they're actually stored. And we'll find that often we store the salt alongside uh, the hashed value, which means that that makes it easier for an adversary to crack. 
And finally, we'll look at some timed passwords, some one-time passwords. Is it possible for us to create a password, hash password, that will only exist for, say, one minute, and then it will change to something else? And finally, we'll have a look at these message authentication codes, or MACs. And this, again, is building up. Uh, in the fourth unit, we have public key encryption or asymmetric key. Asymmetric means we have two keys. We use one key to encrypt and another key to decrypt. So it's a special method. We have a public key and we have a private key. We have a key pair. And Bob uses this key pair. He uses his private key often to sign for something and he will use his public key to be able to prove his identity to others. So as part of this, we'll look at uh, RSA, and increasingly we use elliptic curve uh, methods. So we'll see how special they are and how useful they are in creating modern systems. And then how we can use our private key to be able to authenticate or identify an entity. And finally, we'll have a look at uh, PGP encryption and how we can send secure email. <clears throat> In the fifth unit, we now look at uh, key exchange. Is it possible for, a, for us to, for Bob and Alice to communicate, even though Eve is listening, and for them to end up with the same key on either side? And that's done through key exchange. The core method involved in this is often the Diffie-Hellman method. It's been around for over 40 years, but it's still uh, a highly used method. It's been extended though, and we'll see it uh, within elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, which is used uh, often on uh, systems. But the important thing with it is that we're looking to pass a secret key between Bob and, and Alice. Then in Unit 6, we'll look at trust and digital certificates, some of the basic principles around it, and what a trust our infrastructure will look like. And for this, we'll look at uh, the PKI infrastructure, typically around uh, digital certificates, and to see how the trust infrastructure that uh, Trent sets up, and whether we can trust the entities in involved in creating that trust. Then we'll look at uh, signed certificates and we'll do some practical work around generating self-signed certificates. And finally, we'll look at uh, the basic signatures that we have, hash-based ones, elliptic curve DSA, uh, and so on. Then we'll look at an important area, which is tunneling. <laughs> so tunneling allows us to be able to tunnel through an untrusted network. And even though Eve is listening, uh, she won't be able to see any of the communication, she won't be able to crack any of the communications involved. So that normally involves a uh, handshaking method to generate the shared key and then to be able to tunnel with that uh, shared key. But there are worries around the long-term security of those keys involved, so we need to understand uh, those things. So we'll look at uh, SSL and TLS, which is the core around HTTPS and so on. So we'll try and understand how, how that works, how we can negotiate uh, our crypto between Bob and Alice. Bob might like some crypto and Alice might like some other things. Can they get together and work out what's the best crypto suite that they can use? So we'll look at the whole key generation and how we create the key and how Bob and Alice can agree to what the key is going to be. And often it's around the Stiffy-Hellman method that we'll see. From there, we'll look at a very important area which is increasingly used within cloud systems. You might have a GitHub set up and the way that you connect to it is through SSH. So we need to make sure that that is a secure connection and it's well authenticated because that can be a vector for Eve to be able to crack into our cloud and so on. So we'll look at SSH and then also into IPsec, which is used within many VPN networks. 
but all along we need to understand the basic concepts of the cryptography that's used underneath and understand any weaknesses and the strengths that it, that it has. Then we'll look at evolving areas around blockchain, cryptocurrency, especially into how Bitcoin works, how Bob can send something to uh, funds to Alice through cryptocurrencies without actually getting a trust identity uh, in, involved. Then we'll look in, in a little bit of detail at Ethereum, which provides a good uh, foundation through smart contracts with, uh, with blockchain. And then eventually we will look at uh, what a smart contract uh, looks like. Then we'll look into the future or some of the things that are just evolving just now that aren't quite there, but will definitely happen within the next five to ten years. Zero Knowledge Proof allows us to be able to send things such as your age, date of birth without actually giving away the core data or to prove things such as that you still know your password without giving away your password. Zero Knowledge Proof homomorphic encryption is used where we could process on data but we actually process the encrypted values and still make sense of them. Lightweight cryptography, many devices can't cope with some of the cryptography devices that we've methods that we've created such as EAS or RSA so we use light or weight cryptography which use less processor time and you lose use less memory and uh, use less battery <laughs> or energy than uh, our existing methods and then we'll have a quick look at uh, quantum robust cryptography so if quantum computers come along then some of our our public key methods can be cracked, so we need to make sure that we're building systems that are ready for quantum uh, computers. So that's been a, an introduction uh, to it. Uh, we'll develop the module through each week, so you might not understand each of the core principles involved each week, but ask questions and really make sure that you read the material and you understand all the basic concepts involved. We'll give you study guides so that you can actually draft your answers out and we'll go into more detail about the assessment later on in the module. But uh, please ask questions and learn. Thank you.